Hello everyone, my name is Dorian and welcome to Detroit. We are with the F3 at Belle Isle and I've never driven here before, not even once. It took me about three and a half hours to get this set up and track guide going. Definitely not a perfect lap, but if you do appreciate it, if you like it, please leave a like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you think. If you want this set up, it's in the description below. There's a link to my Discord, you can find it there. And we have Get Good Sundays, just a little reminder. Get Good Sundays, 9 p.m. GMT, every Sunday. We practice for the upcoming week with the F3, two hour session, heat races, and I'll be in chat, you can ask me questions and you'll get early access to the setup that I make. So a day before I actually release it for everyone. That's it, I hope you enjoy it. We're just gonna show you the lap real quick and then we're gonna go over it corner by corner. See you on the track. Okay, so we're coming up to turn number one. Let's look for a breaking point. Well, essentially, we're gonna lift just before the Coke sign, the red one, and start to turn in as we reach it. And as we start to turn in, I'm gonna touch the brakes very softly, around 20%. Downshift pretty late into fifth because I wanna clip this curb late. I don't wanna touch it too early. In fact, I would have loved it if I could have been a little later on it and not mount it because that kind of tossed me to the outside. It was pretty, uh, pretty decent exit. All no. The idea will be to have the car as much, the car as much to the right as possible before we start to turn in to the left. So as you can see, I'm being very gradual with the throttle here. Mount it. I'm taking it to around 60, 70 percent all the way up to 100 but again as soon as i'm gonna start to turn left i'm gonna lift so i'm gonna turn in let's say a little bit before this color variation on the tarmac and again i want to be late here on the into the apex i don't want to clip the curb too early because the exit is really rough i want to stay on the inside for as long as possible and as I can see that I'm getting close to what I would consider the apex, which is right around here where I'm pointing my mouse, I can go back to the power, letting the car go to the outside, opening up the wheel. The one thing you want to avoid is being on the right hand side of the road here. You can see that white mark. If at this point you're right around here, you're going to hit the wall or you're going to have to lift, you're going to lose some time on the exit. Taking the car all the way to the outside, opening up the wheel, and I'm going to stay on the right just for a little bit because there's a few nasty bumps here. So after this white patch, I'm going to go to the left to set myself up for the next corner. Now I'm going to break right at the 300 here. So this little guy, maybe a tiny bit before it, but yeah, I would say right at it. Let's say 60% peak, 65 maybe. And I'm staying on it for a while because I, I need to reduce a lot of speed. I'm doing 170 at this point. So I still got a lot of speed to reduce all the way into third gear. And I'm going to start to turn in as these kind of Cadillac signs, uh, the white signs appear on my left. You're not looking at it at this point. This is just for a reference. So reducing the brakes more and more. 
and trail breaking all the way into the apex and as soon as I reach the apex back on the power. Now because I'm keeping it in third I'm very aggressive. The car is running low RPM, there's no chance the car will settle down, in fact uh, I might have been smart to uh, turn in a tiny bit later because I had a little bit of understeer here. I didn't complete enough of the corner before I went back to the throttle. So a tiny bit later, turn in point would have solved it and maybe gained me half a tenth here on the exit. So that little bit of understeer scrubbed some of the speed off. Couldn't accelerate as quick as I wanted to. But again, the RPM is very low here, so you can just slam the throttle on the exit. A little bit of the grass here. Um, again, didn't really cost me that much, but you'd be wise to try to avoid it. Now, uh, I'm gonna stay in third gear for this next corner. Gonna start to break right around here. No real reference here. So, I'm looking at these signs. They all look the same. Nothing really uh, kind of resembles uh, a marker. But this is where I'm gonna do it. You can do it a tiny bit later as well. I, I decided to kind of keep it safe. 40% peak, staying in third, and releasing it immediately as I asked for the car to to turn in kind of neutral in all the way into the apex i would prefer to go around this apex that means breaking a little bit later turning a little bit later and not touching this curb on the end side that kind of make, make make the car bounce on the exit that was a scary moment if you break a little later turn in later you'll carry more speed into the corner and you won't have to touch this part which could upset the car way more than it did just now up to fourth for a very short period of time the idea will be to uh kind of help me carry speed into this next corner because i want to have a fast uh entry speed you're only going to lose most of the speed right at, at the apex and it's a very late apex so fourth kind of helps me do that my marker is right as this barrier this concrete barrier breaks there's a there's a fracture here you can see it changes direction so slightly before it i'm going to start braking Peaking at around 35-40%. Starting to turn in bef way before the Firestone here, but I'm turning in softly. I'm not asking for much at first. Staying on the outside, not looking for the for the curb too early here. Downshifting into third. Trail breaking all the way into it. And as I get close to the apex, I'm back on the power. 40, 50, 60%. Very very uh gradual here because this wall. I'm gonna give it a little kiss on the exit, a little bit of oversteer, a little smudge here, a little bit of tire marks, but you know, that's fine, That that's about as much as you can use, uh, as much track as you can use really. Maybe a little too uh, early with the turn in, that's why I touched the wall, so if I would have been a little bit later, I could have carried just as much speed. This is by far not a perfect lap, this is... You know my first time on this track so i'm i'm finding it very difficult to uh, kind of get that perfect lap in time to break very early here i'm going all the way to the left and way before i even straighten out the car i'm going to start braking because i want to grab that apex and i want to be as close to it as possible you have two trees here so the first tree let's say is your breaking point you're not looking at it this is just for reference so i'm going to start braking I'm staying in third gear, by the way, the whole way through, on the previous corner and this one. And the next tree, the final tree, is my turn-in point. So as I reach it, I'm going to start to turn in the car, as I cross it, really. Trail braking into the apex, very small amount of braking. This is just to rotate the car nicely. I'm trying to avoid the understeer. Turning in very early, and as I can see, I'm about to hit this uh, barrier, this little sign here. I'm back on the power, opening up the wheel. So that kind of drifts me away from it make sure i'm not touching it and that was pretty much as good as i want to take this corner if i'm honest it's hovering around 70 percent for a while so i'm starting with 50 percent just to get the car to understeer a little bit opening up the wheel staying on 70 percent because there's a couple nasty bumps on the exit here you want to avoid the, the oversteer uh, especially on the first lap by the way be very very careful here and as I can see, the car kind of settles down, it's safe, back to 100%. Taking the car all the way to the outside and back to the inside here to take a nice short route. Staying on the left of the white line or right on it, because after it, to, to its right, there's going to be a few 
pretty bad bumps you want to avoid those got the corvette sign uh that's your general indication but the 300 is a better marker for the next breaking point as you can see i'm not hugging the wall too closely on the entry i'm taking a diagonal line so i can stay close to the wall to the wall under breaking it still goes left here stop keeps going left so right before the 300 i would call it the 315 or so gonna start breaking pretty high peak at around i don't know 80 percent 75 percent and see how close I am to the wall just now. I'm trying to hug it and maximize my approach for the next corner. Slowly releasing the brakes because I need to reduce a lot of speed. Around 50% at this point when I'm start starting to turn in. This is where my, my turning point is. All the way into third gear. I'm looking to just clip the outside of this curb nicely. I'm not trying to mount it on, on its highest power. Just slightly before it. And I'm already back on the power. So you can see, I want to show you the entire process again. So, going back on the power as soon as I hit this apex. Pretty aggressive. I lost a lot of speed. So, I had to reduce some of that throttle to make sure I don't understeer into the swall. Very tricky to do. Very, very tricky not to do that, actually. And back to 100%. Taking the car all the way to the right, and again, there's a breaking point in this uh, little barrier, concrete stuff. So right before it, I'm going to start braking, and this time I'm going to downshift into second gear. So I'm braking around 40% in a straight line, trying to turn in late. And releasing the brakes. Now, there's a dip here. We really have to utilize this dip. So you'll see, if I take it really slowly... You'll see the car dips down in the front just now and as the front rises i know the rear end dip down and as the rear end dips down see the front rises i'm gonna go back to the power because that's the point where i'm gonna get the most amount of compression in the rear that's a lot of rear end grip and i was very aggressive on the exit so immediately back to 50 60 percent open up the wheel and had plenty of oversteer on the exit a bit of hero moment Took it sideways, didn't lose a lot of time for it, apparently. Um, but yeah, a little sketchy. Pretty aggressive. I should have been a little more patient, perhaps, with the fall, but it was a good exit. I had a good amount of speed here. Up to third. And we're looking for the first apex. I'm already kind of lifting to the first apex. I want to take a relatively tight line here. So I'm letting the car reach the first apex, open up the wheel, let it go to, I don't know, let's say the middle or slightly to the left of the middle of the track. Putting the car right here, dabbing the brakes just slightly, just to put some weight on it. I'm trying not to scrub off speed or scrub off as little as possible, really. 20% leaving it, then another, another little dab, keep turning in the car. You can see my wheel inputs here are quite erratic. I'm opening it up and closing it again. Opening it up, closing it again. Trying to make sure the car is taking a nice smooth line throughout and not kind of. I'm trying not to put too much load on the rear tires here, really. Be very careful here on the first lap. The car just. It won't stick. You have to uh, keep a throttle and brake into the second apex. Touching the brakes again. And back on power just a little bit. I'm basically steering with the throttle here. Getting as close as I dare to the second apex. And as you can see at this point, this is not throttle. This is a blip. I'm downshifting into second. As I downshift into second, a little bit more brakes. Get as much rotation as I can. Just hug this curb the whole way through to open up this corner. And that's vital because on this corner, and I'm going to show it to you quickly just now. And we're going to go over it again. There's a dip here. And if you turn the wheel and hit the throttle while you hit that uh, dip, the car is going to uh, oversteer. It's going to have snap oversteer. You're not going to have any grip, no speed on the exit, and you're probably going to crash. So this entire double apex is to prepare myself for uh, to basically finish all my rotation before I hit that dip. So, uh, so I'm staying as wide as I can here on the most left side of the racing lines i can this is where the rubber is so my left wheel is not even on the rubber braking i would say 35 percent 30 percent second gear 
trail breaking all the way into the apex trying to finish as much of the rotation as i can before i hit that dip so as you can see i'm getting as close to this apex as possible this curb without touching it because it's very tall and i'm gonna open up the wheel and look at where the car is at this point i finished most of my rotation the car is almost straight i'm very aggressive on the throttle because i'm not even close to this dip which is the dangerous part and that's where you want to be every time going back to the power as soon as i know i'm kind of safe opening up the wheel back to 100 percent and still had some oversteer because i was a bit aggressive uh, it would have been wiser to be a little smoother stay on 50 60 percent for a little while longer there's a bump there that kind of tossed the car to the outside and uh and the guitars weren't touching the ground so i had to lift a little bit and return to the fall but still pretty decent exit now i've messed this one up a little bit so our breaking point is the 200 all the way up to fourth gear and we're gonna stay in fourth gear car is balanced so you can do that gonna break right at the 200 short period of time around 45 percent immediate release into trail braking and i'm looking for the apex so i'm as soon as i as i start braking i'm looking for the 200 i'm gonna break right at the 200 and i'm diverting my my eyes right here i'm looking here because i want to put my right front as close to this curb without touching it as possible unfortunately a little too aggressive on the entry i got a little bit too much too much rotation and i did clip it i think it cost me about a tenth maybe a tenth and a half throughout the sector all the way to the finish line so you'd be wise to avoid it i did get lucky though because usually if you touch it you just go straight into a wall going back on the power as soon as you reach this apex 40 60 percent i shouldn't have lifted here if i was if i didn't touch that uh curb on the inside immediate into 50 60 70 percent and then as soon as i straighten out the wheel back to 100 you can see i'm straightening out the wheel catching the car but there is a positive here it put me right next to this wall which is where you want to be want to be as wide as possible for this final corner uh essentially the final corner because you can take it flat out with cold tires i wouldn't recommend it you might have to lift a little bit on the entry but if you take a wrong line if you're too narrow if you turn in too late you're not gonna have the grip to take it flat out you're gonna have to be careful and make sure you use all of the road available to you and use the camber on the inside here where all the rubber is that's where all the grip is Hug this apex nicely and that will allow you to take it flat out pretty easily and that's it we're just gonna hug the inside here and that will take us to a 121791 hope you guys enjoyed this track guide if you did please leave a like subscribe let me know in the comments what you think hop over to my discord we have get good sundays every sunday we practice for the upcoming week with the f3s 9 p.m gmt and you'll also be able to find the setups there that's it have a great day see you in the next video bye bye